I'm going to repair this CCTV tester, which is an IPC something or other. It's on the back, maybe. IPC 5200 Plus. I did this thing as a review item some time ago. I actually got it because I wanted to use it to do tracking of video signals. So in my wife's vehicle, she has a reversing camera in there. The original factory stereo had been ripped out by someone. I don't know, it had some rubbishy stereo in there. That's garbage. So I wanted to put a decent stereo system in it. I did actually did some videos on it. I think I published them, I'm not sure. Those videos were requiring me to basically hook up the reversing camera to the new stereo. So when you went to reverse, you could use the screen on the stereo as a reversing system, right? And I had to try and find that signal, which is why I got this thing for a review item, because I thought this would be really handy. I can program with this and track it down. And that's exactly what it did. It worked beautifully for that. It's perfect. Kind of. Now, there's a bit of an extension to that. The reason being is that I blew this up. <laughs> And what actually happened is I was probing around, I had a uh, DC block, because you got these B and C connectors here. So I had a DC block, which I may have here somewhere. Looks a bit like this, it's just a DC block. I've got a couple around, I must have used them all on equipment. It basically goes on a BNC, like that. And then this has basically got a capacitor in it. So it stops any DC from being passed through. But as video signals are AC, they can still pass through. So that way you can still use AC coming through, but it doesn't let any DC through to push DC through to input circuitry. Which was working fine, until I made a mistake. And that mistake was I took it off. And I was doing something else, I can't remember what I took it off for. I think I was trying to probe something else, I needed a cable for something else, and I hooked up to something else and I was doing something. I don't know. And then when I put the cable back on here, I forgot to put the DC block back on. And then I was carried on probing around thinking, I'm not getting a signal now, I was getting a signal there before, where's it gone? And I thought, what's that smell? <laughs> and when you get that, what's that smell? That's always a really bad sign. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I came indoors and pulled this thing apart and found out what was wrong, fixed it, kind of. I did a bodge to get it working and finished doing the job and got that finished. So my wife's car was fixed and back in one piece again. So anyway, I need to revisit this. I need to pull this apart and actually do the proper repair on it. How's that for an intro? To get into this thing, we've got these little corner bumpers because these wrap around the casing. All of these bumpers got to come off. <sighs> That's... 16 screws to remove. Are you ready for the fast forward video? Let's just see if that's enough to get into it without being in the way. I might end up taking them right off. I don't know what I did last time. That doesn't reach. Now I have to use a manual screwdriver to get these deep screws. Nobody likes deep screws. <clears throat> Which also remove the battery pack, which I know is not powered. I've already got it unpowered because otherwise it drains. So I've got this tab across the terminals to stop it from draining. So when I do want to use it, I just take the tab out, plug it back in again. Makes sense. Must not mix the screws up. Well, that one just fell off. Let's pop this casing open. Don't know which side it came from. The back. The back came off. Now, there's that. It's got these extra wires which I've got to unplug. Around the place, it's a bit of messing around. I also got a RF cable here, like that. Then we can fold it over. Now, I think I took the board right out last time. I may not need to do that this time. So, I'll show you what I actually had to do. So, if you look just over here, you see this looks a little bit unusual. So, right here is a resistor that I put in, fusible resistor. I'm going to leave that there, I'm not going to take that out. That is a bodge I put in. I'm going to leave it in place. The last time I actually pulled this whole board out and, and did some work on that, but I, yeah, I'm not going to go there again. <laughs> it was a bit messing around. It doesn't really need to come out for what I'm doing now. So right here is a diode. That's what I put in. This is a Zeno diode. That's all I had. What was across there was a TVS diode. And that TVS diode, when it blew, that shorted out. And then where this resistor is going, this fusible resistor, well, it's actually a fuse, really. It's not it's actually a fuse. There was a track that ran up here underneath this BNC. So this BNC is the output I was using, or input I was using. The track that runs up under here, it burns out. So it's just a really thin, fine track. It's basically came down into the diode just down here, and we have attached here. So it came from the diode up. So that diode was a clamp to protect the input, which is good. It's really good they actually added that in there, because it worked. 
and it burnt that track out like the fuse, you know, that track just burnt out. I had to take this connector off the board so I could get to that track and tidy all that up and fix it because I didn't want it lifting up and shorting onto this connector. So that whole track had to go basically, I had to cut that damaged piece out. It worked, it did its job, it's fine. So um, it's been working fine ever since. So I did this bodge, this bodge is a temporary repair and that's worked fine. So I'm going to keep this fusible this here, well it's actually a fuse, I think it's like a one-amp fuse only. I'm going to leave that there. Right, that can stay right there as it is. I'm not, I'm not going to change that circuit. That's replacing that brute in our track that runs around to the back of the board onto the center pin at BNC. What I do need to do is change this diode to be a TVS again. So I can use my soldering iron on this. Um, I could use hot air. The cathode side is this end towards me. Let's see if I can get this out. Thing is, I've got to try and desolder both ends at once and relying on heat transferring through. I'll change this to a smaller bit, which is probably a mistake before I got this part off. I don't want to use hot air, but I might have to if I can't get this off like this. Let's put some more solder on it and give it a chance. Oh, I might have to hot air this. I don't want to do that though. This is why I want a SND tweezer on a decent one, not a rubbish one like I've got. Because it'd be perfect for this. Let's hot air this and... Hope I don't screw it up. It's got a really small bit on here though. Oh, that's not a small bit, is it? Hmm. Okay, let's try this for hot air. Try to angle it away from anything that matters. There we go, that was easier. Hope I got away with it. Right, so this part does not have any polarity, so it doesn't matter which way around it goes in. I'll have to research that just now to make sure, because I couldn't remember. So I need to get this in here, but for instance, I've got this fuse attached to that pad, which this used to go onto. I could move the fuse that I want to attach it to the end. In fact, I think I'll do that. I do have some um, solder mask put down on this board, so it may look dirty as well. But it's actually yellow solder mask, so it may look like it's awesome, it's not good, but it's actually alright, it's just a off solder mask I put down. But there was some residue there which I wanted to get off. Using a bit of flux will make a difference, make it a bit nicer. So the heat's getting sucked away from this side because that's where the ground plane is. And this side is fine. Tack this on. Because it's almost nice and warm. That'll do. Alright, let's put this thing back together. And hopefully I haven't broken anything in the process. Because you never quite know. All good. Let's put the screws back in it. You don't need to see me do that. Right, let's turn this thing on and see if it still works. Got the light on. Still is on, eh? The screen still works. That's always good. Takes a while to boot up. Also, I can't test the input because I've got no camera source to plug into it right now. Well, seems to be booted at least. It's probably good. Well, that's all working absolutely fine, so I'm happy with that. That's a nice simple thing. I mean, obviously, it would have been better if I actually recorded the original repair when I fixed it and found what was wrong with it. I should have recorded that then. I didn't because I was in a rush to get the job done. So I thought I'd just do a little follow-up to show what I had to do, I suppose. But maybe it'll be interesting for someone or helpful for someone, maybe. So make sure you subscribe, click the like button if you like the video, and I'll catch you later. Oh, check playlist out. Playlist down here, playlist over here. Subscribe link over here, Patreon support link over there, something like that.